so we're nearing the conclusion of this beautiful story of the Book of Tobit. And as I've been mentioning before, I just encourage you to, to pick it up some time and read it. It's one of those books of the Bible that are very easy to get through because it's in the context of a story, of a narrative. Sometimes in some of the larger Isaiah or Jeremiah, we can get lost in the different prophecies and oracles. And this is one that's very easy to follow, like Jonah. It's a story that has a, a beginning, it has dramatic plot, all those different things, and has just a beautiful conclusion. And uh, there's something about the nature of stories, like our heart is made for stories. And, and that's why the Lord spoke to us in parables, but also how he gives us the scriptures in the context of a great story, the great adventure, as, as many people would say. And it's because the, the Lord takes that, 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 that love of story within our heart and he writes history, but using not just characters, but using real events, real people to tell a story about a father who loves his children. And here in this part of that great story, we hear how God the Father is faithful to his children that are suffering. If you've been following the story through these past several days, we've heard the, the experience of, of Tobit, this righteous man, and how he, he falls into illness, he falls into blindness. There's tragedy that happens. His own wife starts to insult him, saying that, look what's happened to you now after all of your, your piety and your righteousness, and, and here you are um, in your state right now. In other words, God's abandoned you. And he cries out this bitter cry, saying, Lord, I just want to die because it's too much suffering, all these insults. Just imagine that experience. Someone who's willing to just say, Lord, I'm suffering so much. Lord, people are making fun of me so much that please, Lord, the best thing you can do for me is just kill me. And then we have the story of Sarah. And Sarah is in another situation. It's even more precarious, more tragic, because all of these husbands that she's been trying to marry to be able to, to rejoice in that gift of marriage. But before, uh, on their wedding night, this demon strangles each one of them, seven of these, seven of these, of these would-be husbands. And so everyone's blaming her, and she's ready to kill herself. She says, I, I better just hang myself. But then she captures herself in the midst of it, saying, if I do that, then I'm going to be insulting my father even more because I've already been... Um, People have already looked to me and have brought shame upon my father. But if I do this, it's going to be even worse. And so then she cries out. She says, Lord, help me. I have no one else. I'm at the bottom. And it says the Lord heard their cry and sent the archangel Raphael. Angels, that name means messenger. They're, they're spirits of the Lord. That, that worship around him, but when we say angel, it's not who they are, but it's what they do. And they are a messenger. And here, the messenger of God healing. And so Raphael comes from the throne of God, and he's used in this hidden way. And tomorrow we actually hear the story of him revealing himself, saying, actually, I'm not just a kin's men of you. I'm the archangel Raphael, one of the seven spirits who stand before the throne of God. And God sent me because he heard your cry. And what Raphael will do is he will help Tobit's son come to meet Sarah. And he will even give the um, to, uh, Tobiah the ability of fighting against the demon Asmodeus and really casting him away all sorts of really interesting things there. We don't hear that in, in, in these readings, but, but it's in part of the story of Tobit. And so now there's finally evil, the dragon has been overcome, 
And now we get to this beautiful, and they lived happily ever after. And that beautiful conclusion here of God healing reminds us that ultimately, good triumphs over evil. And we see that in the midst of the mystery of the cross and the ultimate resurrection. And this, these happily ever ending moments here, even though we experience some of those little joys here in life, the ultimate happily ever after is always going to be in heaven. And so we never want to, in a sense, cling to the happily ever after being just a physical thing that happens in this life because we'll always do, be disappointed because God has so much more for us. The incompleteness um, of this life opens itself out to this profound vista of the of the country of the Lord that we never, ever stop growing in love with. And so let us rejoice with Tobit, with Tobiah, with Sarah, with Raphael, with Anna, in this beautiful story of rejoicing that becomes an image of how God will walk with us through the midst of darkness, through the battles against the Asmodeus within our own life. And he will bring us through that because he sends his angels, angels who are ministers of healing, to heal relationships, to heal marriages, to heal despair, to heal the, the sense of abandonment. And all of these things Raphael does on behalf of the Lord who sent him. So ask this great archangel to intercede for you, to be sent from the throne of God. Cry out to God. Be like Sarah. Be like Tobit. And say, Lord, I know that you are merciful. Send your angels. Help me to walk through this valley of darkness.